Hi, my name is Bente, I'm the Norris Witch and today I thought I would give you a little bit of a life update because I know that there are definitely people out there struggling with similar things as me and I thought maybe if I tell you about it and the changes that I made and how far I've come by now, maybe it will give you either the incentive to not even make the same mistakes at all or if you are stuck in the same kind of loop that I was stuck in or that I'm currently freeing myself from, then maybe this will give you the motivation you need to break free from it and to make actual changes. So yeah, let's go. So to explain this entire problem, I have to start pretty early on. Basically when I was born. No, but honestly, it basically derives from just the person that I am. Because I am a person that one, has extremely high standards for themselves. Two, I am an extreme people pleaser. And three, I also get excited about things very, very fast. And then I want to get into them and I want to do like 10 million things at the same time. And this combination is very, very bad, as you will see. Because when I first started out with this channel, I thought, okay, this is all like willy-nilly, this is like a fun project and everything is fine. And I have entire weekends to make like a video a week. It is totally fine. But because I am such a people pleaser and I have such high standards for myself, Hi, Nika. I very, very quickly developed this mindset of, oh fuck, I, I cannot miss an upload a week because then the algorithm will, help, will hate me and I will be punished for it and nobody will watch my videos ever again. So I developed a lot of stress around not delivering on YouTube, basically. And that was all fine in the beginning because I was kind of smart before I actually started getting my first videos live, I had already prepared four videos. So I had basically a backup. So if I had like a week where I just wasn't motivated or inspired to make videos, I could just not do it and then make two the next week. So it was fine in the beginning and I had enough time for it and everything was okay. But since I am that kind of person that likes to do everything, I, I think after like three quarters of a year or something, I decided, okay, you know what? I really miss having a small business. I had had two online shops already at that point and stopped doing them because I kind of fell out of love with them. I wasn't motivated anymore to do them. But I was like, well, I kind of actually miss it and I would really like to have a witchy online shop. So additionally to having a normal nine to five day job and having a YouTube channel. I then also started running an online shop. And if you have run an online shop or any kind of business, you know that it is a lot of work. It's not just uploading a product from time to time and then shipping an order. So it's not like half an hour a week or something. It is a lot of work. I found myself loving it, but also again, this perfectionist people pleaser side of me really kicked in and I was like, I have to work nonstop on, on it. I have to bring out a lot of new products because I don't want to disappoint anyone. I want people to be happy with my shop. I want them to find everything they need in my shop. So I started working my day job four days a week and then I had one eight hour so a normal nine to five job of doing YouTube work and another nine to five day of doing shop work. So I was effectively working six days a week and I had one day off. That was already a lot. But then I decided, okay, you know what? Wouldn't it be fun if I uploaded two videos a week and having a day job and an online shop? So I just started piling shit on top. Oh, that was not a good idea. Like running an online shop and the YouTube channel with a video once a week was already hard work and that was already too much work. And I was burning myself out constantly. 
but then putting another video a week on top of it, that was just too much. But I, again, this people pleaser and high standards part of myself really kicked in and I was like, well, maybe because I was kind of seeing not a stagnation in growth on my channel, but my growth was just so friggin' slow and my growth has always been slow. I've never really had like this one breakthrough video that you kind of need to get a big reach. I had always like, my videos were all doing fine, but they were not doing like great. And I saw other people reaching bigger numbers faster. And I was so stuck on the numbers and I was like, I want to grow as fast as the other people do. And they are uploading more videos than I do. So maybe if I upload more videos, then the algorithm will love me more. So I thought, okay, I will start uploading twice a week and I will just try it. But since I am the person that I am, a I will just try it never just stays with I will just try it. So I was actually aiming for doing two videos a week. So I started, for example, the new moon and full moon series that I'm still doing. And that was so overkill. And the problem is that also at that point I had reached like a specific threshold where people start reaching out to you for interviews, for lectures that you can do with them, for them, for workshops, for collaborations, for all of these things. So everything just piled on top. And I'm just, I'm just a person, I get so excited about things like that. I love doing interviews, I love doing podcasts, I love doing workshops for people, I love doing all of that stuff. So I was like, okay, I will do all that stuff. But then at some point, I ended up just, I was working nonstop, like I was doing my day job, and then in the evening I would prepare like an interview or or something for the shop, or I would prepare a lecture or a workshop or something. And then I would do that all week. And then I would have a YouTube day and a shop day. And then I would have one day off. And I was, I wasn't even really realizing how much I was burning myself out. I quickly realized that like, I have no time and no energy and just no brain space for things like meeting with friends. I have no brain space for helping anyone in my surroundings, you know? Like if someone came up and was like, oh, could you help me with this and that? I would, of course I would do it, but I was like, oh fuck, how am I supposed to squeeze that into all of the shit that I'm doing already? But I also didn't think, like I didn't, I didn't realize that, okay, well maybe I will just skip a day of shop work or maybe I will just miss an upload or I will maybe just not do this one workshop or I will maybe not do this interview on another people's podcast. That just didn't really occur to me because I have so high standards for myself that I just think that I have to do everything. That very quickly led to me also just being very very stuck when it came to my own spiritual practice and my own witchcraft practice, my own faith and my own practice, I got really really stuck in everything basically because I just, I didn't have brain space. Like if you are working 24 seven and you're constantly just thinking of all the things that you have to do and your to-do list is getting longer, you're already struggling just basically keeping your house clean Doing basic things like that, st already struggling with that, like how are you supposed to have brain space for your spiritual practice? I definitely didn't. Luckily, I, I still practiced, I still did things, I still pulled through with it, partly because I felt very, very bad about myself, like I felt like I cannot, again, people pleaser, also applies to spirits and deities, so I thought, okay, I cannot disappoint, like, the deities that I work with. I cannot disappoint the spirits that I work with. I have to do something. I cannot just let them sit there, you know, and not give them any attention. So that kept me going, but I was just, I was doing the bare minimum. And of course, I still did a lot of work. I was doing my shop and like, I, when I'm making an, an incense blend, I'm not just throwing herbs into into a bowl and mixing it and then it's done. Like it is being empowered and everything like that. I'm connecting to the plant 
spirits to figure out also which plants I'm using for an incense blend, things like that. So my shop work is part of my witchcraft practice. So at least that is something that I did, but still my own practice that I did just for myself was lacking so much. I was in such an intense rut. Wow, I just realized it got so insanely dark. If it's gotten a little bit dark or the lighting has gotten a little bit weird, that's because basically the world is going down outside. Very rainy, very dark. But okay, we will just keep going. The first thing that made me realize that something was horribly wrong and that I have to really, really, really rethink what I'm doing and break out of this vicious cycle of just doing more and more and more was a workshop that a very good friend of mine offered. It was a mindfulness workshop that was supposed to get rid of some of your stress. And of course, I was a very stressed person. And <laughs> this workshop really opened my eyes to the fact that I was constantly just thinking, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. But the thing is, I just, I wasn't prioritizing it. And for some reason I thought, I cannot prioritize it. I cannot prioritize time with family or friends. I cannot prioritize my own work for myself and taking time for myself, caring for myself. I cannot take time for it because I have to do all of this work. Like in my brain, I did not have the choice of doing the stuff that I'm doing. I didn't have the choice to run a YouTube channel. I didn't have the choice of uploading twice a week. I didn't have the choice to work on products all the time. In my brain, I don't know why, but my brain was like, I have to do all of this. This is not a choice. This is not something that I'm doing because I want to. This is something that I'm doing because I have to, because I can't disappoint anyone. Wow, was that toxic thinking. And yeah, this mindfulness workshop just opened my eyes for the first time to how toxic my thinking was and to how ridiculous that was. So I don't know, Gabby, if you're watching this, but if you are, then thank you so much because that was a very, very, very important thing for me to learn. And then quickly afterwards, after we finished this workshop, I went to Egypt for two weeks. And in these two weeks, I didn't work at all. I didn't even bring, I think I didn't even bring my laptop. I didn't bring my camera. I didn't do anything. I decided that, okay, I will take this time for myself. I will not work. And I was so relaxed and it was so weird because I was not working and I was used to working 24 seven. So this was so strange. And I realized how nice it is to actually have time for yourself or to have time to do things that you like to do. So at that point I was really like, okay, I, I kind of have to change something, but I didn't really change anything. I mean, I consulted with my ancestors, for example, to find a solution and I decided, okay, I will only work on my shop stuff once every two weeks and not every week. So I was at least taking a little bit more time for myself, but I was still planning on doing two videos a week. I was doing less, but I wasn't doing less enough, if that makes sense. I was also doing like 10 million side projects, like organizing the trip to Iceland, um, doing the, the lecture for Sunrise Mystery School, doing interviews, so many things. And I don't regret doing them because they are amazing and I was it was so much fun doing them but I was kind of I was doing less shop work but then I was doing more more work to the side um, also at that point I had taken back up my patreon so it was kind of balancing itself out where I was doing less shop work I was doing more patreon and side projects but then I got a tarot reading from Frankie chaotic witch aunt and wow, that called me out. Wow. Like Mike, the question that I went into the reading with was what I basically can do to get out of this rut in my practice, because I, I had just no motivation to do anything. I went into this reading, like I'm in this rut with my spiritual practice. I don't know what to do. And the cards were just like, you're working too much. Stop working so much. Fuck you. You're working too much. Basically they were calling me out majorly and I really needed that because afterwards I was really like okay this is ridiculous what the fuck am I doing also just talking to another creator who has experienced similar things was very very helpful and that was the first 
time that I actually realized like actually does this even matter like the the friggin number on my channel like the follower number the subscriber number does that matter no it doesn't um, and I am not financially dependent on my YouTube channel or my shop so does it really matter no it doesn't and I love doing that I love doing all of it so I'm not stopping but I don't have to do it all the time I don't have to put all this pressure on myself I don't have to have these insane standards that I would never put onto anyone else but me so I have decided and I have actually already made a lot of changes that for example I basically shut down my shop's Instagram. I'm just using my my own Instagram, my private Instagram, well, my private, my the Norris Witch Instagram for both my shop stuff and myself because I cannot handle two Instagram accounts. Doesn't work. I'm only doing shop stuff whenever I feel like I want to. Of course, if an order comes in, I will ship it, of course. But when it comes to new products, products, drops, shop updates, I will only do it if I'm motivated and if I feel like I want to because I also don't want to force myself. The products don't come out as I want them to if I force myself either way. So I'm only doing shop work if I want to. And also I'm not doing a lot of side projects anymore. As much as I love doing interviews on other people's podcasts for example, I'm doing much less of that. Side projects in general I'm trying to keep it at a minimum. And once my new moon and full moon series is done, I am not doing two videos a week anymore. I haven't done really two videos a week for a couple of months now, also because now I also stopped um, my collaboration with the Witch's Moon, so there will be no unboxings anymore. So basically there will only be two more new moon and full moon videos and then I'm going properly back to one video a week. And that will be amazing because then one, I can work myself back on a backup of four videos because right now I don't have a backup. So I have to do videos every week, otherwise I'm, I don't have videos to upload. Um, but also I'm like, well, if I don't feel like filming, if I don't feel like making videos, if I'm not inspired and if I don't really know what to film about, then I will just not do it. And if I miss an upload one week, it is fine, because if the algorithm wants to punish me, then so be it. Afterwards, I will upload once a week again, and then it will be fine. I don't know. This intense fear of missing an upload has definitely decreased, so that is great. And also, I don't look at the numbers as much anymore. I don't feel the need to push my channel. I don't feel like I have to grow, especially I don't feel like I have to grow as much as other channels do. I'm very, very happy if other channels grow and I don't, so be it. Um, people who care for my content will watch my content and the ones who don't, won't. And that is totally fine. So I definitely have gotten rid of a lot of stress, of a lot of pressure and a lot of work. And it is amazing and I am so grateful for Every single person who helped me on this journey, who basically kicked me in the butt to make changes. I already see a lot of change. I'm much more relaxed. I have so many evenings off just for myself. I can do pole twice a week or even three times a week if I want to because I have the time to do that. I can take an entire day to spend with my best friend which we haven't done in a long time because I, ne I could never really take a day off because I only had one day off and this one day was basically like the only time that I had for myself. So now I, I, I'm spending more time with my fiance, I'm spending more time with friends, I'm spending more time with family. I have more time for my own practice and the motivation is coming back. That is the one thing that I'm so grateful for apart from spending time with my loved ones is that I have motivation again to get into hobbies or to work on something in my spiritual practice. Like I, I have motivation and energy to do things. I don't know what the point of this video is. I just thought maybe 
hearing from someone who struggles with similar things, if you are also a person who either puts a lot of pressure on themselves, has extremely high standards for themselves, is an extreme people pleaser, wants to do all of the things all of the time, and you struggle with those things too, then maybe if you hear that getting away from that and actually making changes is amazing, because it is. Of course, I'm not out of this loop 100%, but I feel like I'm there maybe 80% and you know the last 20% are always the hardest part. But it's, it's so good, honestly. Just not working all the time, having time for yourself, having brain space to do other things and energy to do other things, even just having the time, simply just having the time to, for example, take a nap whenever I want to take a nap or to go outside and take a walk when I want to go outside and take a walk because the weather is nice. Just having that time and not being like, no, I have to be inside and work. It's so good. It's so good. And now I'm motivated again. And now I'm signed up for like three different courses and I'm excited for it. Yeah, if you struggle with similar things, trust me, it's really, really worth getting out of the loop. Especially because if you are stressing yourself out all the time, your life will probably be significantly shorter than if you take time for yourself. So please take care of yourself. So yeah, I guess that was the whole point of this video. I know it's not necessarily a big witchcraft topic, but it made a big impact on my personal practice. So maybe it helped someone. Hopefully you at least didn't find it boring or anything. Like if someone didn't want to watch it because it's not necessarily witchy witchy, I'm, that's totally fine. It will reach the right people. And if not, that's also fine. So, patron shout out. Thank you so, so much to Autumn, Shay, Pat, Lindsay, Kelly, Linda, The Other Saffron, Orcus, Silent Selena, Richard, Standing Fox, Jennifer, Ryan, Alex, Jazz, Shaw, Christiana, T. Demon, Elizabeth, Sylvia, Katrina, V. Bella, Derek, Smiley, Kirsten, Shannon, Andrew, Tisha, Sarah, Roan, Aziza, August, Shelby, Helena, SJ, Anne, Kate, Cade, Z, Kent, Brittany, Small Kata, Josh, Elinura, Knarr, Christine, Rixi Business, Annalena, Ashley, Tim, John, Phoenix, Jenny, Maggie, Amy, Bethany, Timothy, Coffee, the honorary gossip squirrel, and last but not least, Bjorn. And now let's look at the YouTube members. Thank you so, so much again to Pat, Lindsay, Betsy, Peony Rain, Miller, and KT. Honestly, thank you so, so much. There are so many amazing patrons already. I am so happy. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up and ring the bell down below so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Feel free to check out my other socials or my shop for ethically and sustainably sourced witchy wares. And if you want to support me in another way, then feel free to check out my Patreon or my YouTube membership. And with that being said, I will see you in another video. Bye!